everyone, welcome back to another album review here on the Yoli YouTube channel. In today's, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new album by Deep Purple called Equal Sign 1. Not really sure what the title means, being Equal Sign 1, but is what it is. Some albums have odd titles, but I've listened to this album three times so far, and I'm going to give you all, all of my thoughts, any positive, mixed, or negative thoughts I have on the album. And before we get started, y'all be sure to drop your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm sure we'll all have very different takes on this album, and I would love to hear all of y'all's thoughts down in the comments below. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So for a little bit of background before we get started, I wouldn't call myself a die-hard Deep Purple fan. I do like Deep, Pur Deep Purple, but I'm more of a casual Deep Purple fan. Y'all will definitely see that whenever we get into my top 10 songs and my album ranking videos I plan on doing for Deep Purple, but I'm more of a casual fan. I've listened to a couple of their most uh, popular albums, and I like a lot of the songs off of those, but haven't really listened to uh, much outside of those so this is one of the first albums i've listened to outside of the ones that i'm familiar with so it definitely was pretty interesting experience so definitely take that into consideration i'm sure some die hard deep purple fans that have been listening to them especially uh since the 70s from their head they will definitely have very different opinions on each of their albums than i do so definitely take that into consideration for this album review and for the upcoming other Deep Purple uh, videos I got planned. But with that out of the way, we're going to start off with all of my positives for this album. So starting off with the positives for this album, I think the sa overall sound on here is really good. I do like all the performances on the album. Uh, Ian Gillen sounds really, really good. Obviously not as good as his uh, Heyday, but he definitely does sound pretty good. You know, Ian Pace, Roger Glover... Uh, Don Airy, and you have a new guitar player that replaced uh, Steve Morse, uh, who appeared on the album before uh, this one and many other albums before uh, him, and that is Simon McBride, and I think all the performances from all five of these guys are really, really solid on this album. I don't think there's a bad performance. I think the overall sound is really good. Performances are good. The band sounds pretty good, especially since uh, all of these guys, if I recall correctly, or most of them anyhow, are in their 70s. So they definitely do a very good job. And I do like some of the songs off here. My favorites so far are definitely all the singles that uh, they put out uh, because those are the ones I've had the most time with and most familiar with. Those are Portable Door, Pictures of You, which is probably my favorite song off the album, and Lazy Sod. The other songs that stood out to me were If I Were You, Sharp Shooter. Uh, those were the other two standouts. There are 13 songs total with uh, 52 uh, minute runtime. But overall, I think the overall sound is pretty good, and you had some pretty good songs. I do have a few mixed aspects uh, for this album, which we shall get into. So, starting off with the uh, mixed aspects for this album, one thing I found interesting, especially uh, listening to Deep Purple's discography, uh, start to finish and in order, uh, I've been listening to a lot of the later Deep Purple albums, obviously not near as much as uh, the earlier stuff, like Machine Head and In Rock and stuff like that, and uh, so a lot of the later albums were first-time listens for me. And uh, a lot of them kind of seem to blend together for me in terms of sound. Not a lot of them really stand out on their own. This one stands out a little bit more than some of their later career albums because I've listened to it a couple more times than those. Uh, the other ones I've only listened to once, so maybe that's a factor. Or maybe it's a factor that I'm not as huge on Deep Purple as some others are. I definitely do like Deep Purple quite a bit, but I wouldn't consider them one of my uh, you know top 10 favorite bands or a diehard a fan of Deep Purple, but I did notice a lot of their later albums kind of blend together, and a lot of them just aren't very memorable. There were some songs off of this album that I did enjoy, that I did uh, like, but a lot of the album just didn't really stand out to me, and that's because they all kind of seemed to blend together a little bit. But, you know, the performances were really good, some of the songs were really good, but I would consider this one of my favorite Deep Purple albums, or one of their best by a long shot. But that's the same uh, that goes with a lot of their later albums. But of course, when you compare an album like this to, you know, In Rock, or Fireball, Machine Head, or any of the, you know, 70s albums in their heyday, or even some of the 80s albums like Perfect Strangers or House of Blue Light, I definitely do think those albums are substantially a lot more better uh, than albums like this. But that doesn't take away uh, from me enjoying this album. I did enjoy this album, but the one mixed aspect that I have with this album kind of goes with a lot of other uh, later Deep Purple albums. Just not a whole lot that stands out 
that is really, really memorable or striking to me, other than a few songs that I've listened to several, several times, especially like the singles that I checked out whenever they first checked out, as opposed to uh, saved for whenever I listened to the album. But that's the only mixed aspect I have on this album. I did enjoy this album. I am pretty positive on it. The positive on it. The performances were good. Some of the songs were good. Just not one of my favorite Deep Purple albums. And I don't expect that this to be a lot of other Deep Purple, a lot of people's favorite Deep Purple albums. But I do think this is another solid album in their discography. That's definitely one of my favorite uh, later Deep Purple albums. But also take into consideration probably because I've listened to it just a little bit more. But those are all the mixed aspects I have of the album. So let's get to my overall thoughts. So overall thoughts for this album, I did enjoy it. I recommend everybody a fan of this type of music or a fan of Deep Purple, definitely check it out because you'll probably like it quite a bit. If you're a diehard Deep Purple fan, a much bigger fan than I am, you'll probably like this one a lot more than I did. But y'all be sure to drop all of y'all's thoughts down in the comments below. I would love to see all of y'all since I'm sure they're going to be very different from mine who's just a casual Deep Purple fan. But I did enjoy this album and pretty positive on it. But y'all be sure to drop y'all's thoughts down in the comments below. Also down below, I'll have a link in the description where you can go check out my album review playlist. If you enjoy this one, there will probably be something else y'all will highly enjoy in that playlist. Also down below, I'll have a link to where you can go follow me on Instagram and to where you can go stream my original music. I got four songs out right now on all streaming platforms. So I hope y'all enjoyed this review here up on the old YouTube channel. If you did, please consider subscribing and giving the video a like. I would highly appreciate it quite a bit. So once you're done watching this video, blast this album if you haven't already and have a wicked ass day.